I officially accept your nomination to be Vice President of the United States of America. For the last eight years, President Trump has given everything he has to fight for the people of our country. There is tough, and then there's Trump tough. Donald Trump is unstoppable. Elect him president again, and America will be unstoppable too. Because when President Trump unleashes American energy, we unleash American prosperity, and we ensure our national security. Ohio Senator J.D. Vance and other supporters making their case for a second Trump presidency at the Republican National Convention last night. Today is the fourth and final day, and we'll hear from Donald Trump himself. The former president will take the stage to officially accept the party's nomination. He is expected to emphasize a call for unity across party lines, pushing forward today's theme, Make America Great Once Again. J.D. Vance gave his first address last night since being named former President Donald Trump's running mate. The 39-year-old used his youth and uh, his backstory to make the case to voters. Let's bring in uh, Tony DeCopel, who's been covering the RNC the entire, entire time here in Milwaukee. So, Tony, I do want to talk about J.D. Vance's speech, but I want to ask you about something else as well. You know, as I've been dipping in periodically to uh, the convention, what I have noticed is there are sort of two buckets of types of speeches. Um, there is this push that we heard was coming for unity, um, that, that this is a time to bring all segments of the Republican Party together and perhaps a hint to people outside of the party. And then there are some of these speeches that I, I feel like they were almost dusted off from the last RNC, where they never had an audience, so they felt, oh, I can, now I can finally say this stuff in front of an audience. It's the old-timey stuff. It's the, you know, invasion across the border. It's the inflammatory language. I can't figure out what RNC we're looking at here. I'm curious about how the attendees wow. seem to be reacting to the two different types of messaging. Well, you know, that's a great question, Emory, and I think the attendees want both, and they are getting both. There is a desire for unity. People are exhausted by the arguing. They would love to have uh, agreement or compromise in theory, but what they really mostly want, and what I'm sure is true of the left as well, is they, they want the other side to say, you know what, I've given it some thought, and we do think you're right after all. Let's do it your way. There's not a lot of political reality in the cross-section between the two parties. And what you're seeing as we get further and further away from the assassination attempt is more of the political reality of difference creeping back in. And there are some policies that are really, really very, very different uh, party to party. And last night's theme was a good example of that, where it was about national security and you mentioned the border. Well, some of the signs, the official signage given out by the RNC last night uh, said mass deportations now, which is a phrase that alarms people on the left, feels cruel to people on the left, is intended to alarm people on the left, but is incredibly popular with the GOP. According to CBS polling, upwards of 85 to 90 percent, I think the number is 88 overall, Republicans support a national program to deport all undocumented immigrants. And when I talk to people here about that, they say, that's not hard line. That's not hard line. It's just following the law. And then when I you know, further point out that, well, it's a lot harder line than prior Republicans. Ronald Reagan offered amnesty to millions of immigrants from uh, south of the border. Uh, President George Bush uh, had a big policy proposal, big speech to a national audience about a pathway to citizenship, normalizing people who had been here and were woven into communities. Uh, and people now say, no, this is different. This is all very different. Um, and that's the feeling. So, but, the, you know, when you talk about deporting all undocumented immigrants in America, the reality of our border situation over the last multiple administrations is that we have 10 million plus people who have been here for many, many years who are now members of churches and who have jobs and have spouses and who have kids and they're members of communities and they're, they're part of your dog walking crew and they're, they're everywhere. They're in our lives in America and to rip all of these people out of all their little communities would be a deeply traumatic thing and the details are, are difficult to imagine. Uh, and, and as a matter of policy, I don't know how they get there. So, but that's what, where the, the, 
tale of two Americas and this vision of, of America that is in competition with one another, a culture war, which is what Pat Buchanan at a, a convention in the 90s said. I've asked people about that. They still feel that America is in a culture war. So while nobody wants it to become a shooting war, that is the, 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 the ideas themselves are banging up against each other in a very dramatic way. And before Saturday, people were worried about a shooting war. And the fear is that this moment of calm, this moment of unity will wear off over time because there remain real differences between the parties and people feel those differences have serious consequences, and they do. Really fascinating. Uh, Tony, thank you so much.